Hello and welcome to Back and Simplify. Two weeks ago, Apple released the Apple Vision Pro and something else. The Puku, Apple's new configuration language. Until now, the company used it internally. In this video, we'll cover why this language is required, see some pickle code, and cover the main features of Puku. Let's start with the why. Apple claims... <laughs> nah, I don't like to say Apple claims. Let's say Pickle. Pickle claims in their documentation that we created Pickle because we believe that configuration is the best expressed in special purpose configuration language, a blend between a static configuration format and a general purpose programming language. <sighs> okay, let me give you some pain points of configuration that Pickle tries to solve. First, let's say you are working on an app and you want to configure your business URL to your iOS, Android, and backend developers. How can you do it? You may need to create several files containing the same data. iOS work with plist, Android with XML, and backend, Node.js for example, usually works with JSON. Here's pain point number one. The second pain point is that configuration files are static and if someone accidentally removes your port variable and set it to be a string, you may catch it only on your production environment. The last point is to formalize the configuration process. Because it's not depending on a specific programming language, even companies with the same stack can configure way different. Okay, before we dive into the features, I want to say two things. One, we'll see some code examples. I feel pickle syntax is kinda simple and self-explanatory, so I won't cover it line by one. Our purpose in this video is to feel what this am amazing language can give you and maybe considering to use it in the future. And two, if you find this video helpful, please like the video and help us reach more curious people like you. Good, show me some code. All the snippets are taken from the pickle documentation. This is the pickle file called pickle tutorial part 3. Pickle files are also called modules. You can see in this module that we define name with type string, part with type int, boolean, and uh, you got the concept. You can also write your variables without specifying the type. But I think that if we are trying to do something right, let's do it all in. To convert this file to a config file, you need to execute pickle eval and the name of the file. With this CLI command, you have a format flag that you can specify which output representation you want. You can choose between YAML, PLS, JSON, and some more like you can see in the list here. But what happens under the hood? When you execute the evil function, it validates the file, we'll cover this great feature later, and create something called data model. The, this data model is immutable. It means that when you are trying to change it, it always returns a new variable, leaving the original value unchanged. After that, it turns it into the external presentation you choose. Let's continue with the six language highlights. The order will be from the least impressive to the most impressive, in my opinion, of course. The first one is unit types. Sometimes we need to set a variable with the units, size for example. It is a common mistake that one developer will present it with megabytes and other with gigabytes. Here comes the unit types like you can see here. Pickle also created types for duration, second, minutes and etc. The next one is wide support for IDEs and languages. Pickle already released plugins for VS Code, IntelliJ, and NVM, and have libraries for JVM runtime, Swift, and also for Golang. It's impressive, don't you think? To understand this highlight, let's look at the following snippet. Here you can see that we configure bird object with name, diet, and taxonomy. After that, we created new parrot object with bird in brackets. This will create parrot with the same attributes but those who are overridden. It's inheritance but they called it amending. Nice. Let's continue here with my top 3 features. The next fella is the ability to import. Pickle allows us to import and export pickle objects. 
It's amazing because we can split our configuration to different files and put each file in the right place. It also allows to share configuration between teams working on the same project. It's just getting better and better, let's see the last two. The next highlight is the ability to generate multiple files with one CLI command. Just imagine what it will look like to create JSON, YAML, PLIST with one command in your deployment pipeline. Feels like just this feature gives you a good reason to use Pico. Are you ready for the best feature? It is the ability to add input validation. You can config validation for every variable you set, something like this. We set port to be integer greater than a thousand. When we eval this file, you'll get an informative error. This feature is just amazing. And it's not everything. You can create your own input validation like this. Here we set a pipeline class that receives branch name as an optional value and we want to add validation that checks we receive branch name if we get the name variable. If this validation fails, it will throw an error with the eval and not on production at the middle of the night. This is definitely my favorite. What is yours? What do you think about Pico? Tell me in the comments. That's it. Thanks for watching and sub for more content like this.